Frankie, we got four Macs that we've been talking about for a while and never done today on Box Mac. Well, when you're right, you're right. And you, you're always right. Okay, we save her, but how? Oh, you're right. And when you're right, you're right. And you, you're always right. Okay, we save her, but how? We've joked that we keep getting sent to Betty Baker yes. and we keep not doing it. I see a Betty Baker. Never heard of Betty Baker. Open. I've also included the one that opened in transit from my last package. Betty Baker and Santa Sophia, these are lady men. Yeah, yeah. Those feel to me like the ones that would be like, oh yeah, we haven't done this Betty Baker one. I mean, we could, we could do it. Betty Baker brand, we keep getting these Betty Bakers and we keep not doing them. We need to do them. But guess what? We also keep getting sent Baby Shark masks. We do. All right, now here's a back I'm admittedly a little excited about, Baby Shark. I had this at home with my kid. Yes. Uh, you'll get to try it. Yep. It's Walmart exclusive. Yep. And it's shaped. So this new thing of like, there's a cartoon character on the front. We haven't done this particular yep. one. And I'm sure that the Kraft ones are good because Kraft doesn't release really bad Macs in my experience. I'll tell you this, the organic ones that we had, we had a, a white cheddar and a regular. Yeah. Um, we liked them. We both. quite liked them a lot. And right. I think the cauliflower one too, we didn't hate. It's really not bad. They've made a very strong cheese flavor, yeah, I think, to, to cover the cauliflower. They sure did. These are all dry, not, yep. not, not a sauce in the mix. Yeah. Not a mix in the sauce. Do you ever eat Kraft macaroni and cheese anymore? Uh, free cheese sometimes. Yeah. And thick and creamy now and then, but it's not my go-to. Thick and creamy I've actually enjoyed more frequently this past year. So let me tell you the new system. This is the medium front, and then you put the cheese packet back in the box. <sighs> would the it were so simple? <laughs> would, would the it were? Would the it were so simple? What do we know about Betty Baker? Nothing, that's what. Who is she? Let's look what it does up. she do? What does she want in life? So far, I can't find anything other than like reviews. And what do the reviews say? What do the early reviews say, Frankie? <laughs> what do the, the what does IGN say? About <laughs> I don't know. There's a guy named Richard Reviews Everything Blogspot Okay. And in 2017, he said Betty Baker thinks that macaroni and cheese should be someone's dinner. Where this is not as sad as Pop Tarts for dinner, it's still rather sad. Jesus Christ! Get out this of my discount life. mac and cheese is not as good as the Kraft version that I grew up with. It's thinner and not as satisfying. Is it a big deal? Nah. But this is only worthy of buying if it's cheaper than the name brand. That sounds like an IGN review. While it doesn't stack up to Kraft macaroni and cheese as we remember from our childhoods, Betty Baker will satisfy. Fans of the genre will definitely appreciate. Fans of it. <laughs> EJ and I, when we didn't know each other quite as well, we were in like a, uh, a number of very pretentious film school classes together. And there was like one kid, do you remember his name? It was- uh, Tim? Tim. And I remember we were both trying to like say shit that he would say. <laughs> and there was like, you said like, I would be remiss. Yeah. <laughs> Tim. He was like nice, but pretentious. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of people. Not much meat on those bones either. <laughs> no. Like, yeah, like it didn't, he didn't like then like show up with an amazing film. That's what I'm always waiting for with these fucking people. I'm like, man, you talk a good game. I think like Will Rogan was the opposite where he had a bad first impression, but yeah. he kind of won me over. My uh, fellow idea person. We're really talking about branding right now. Like on a horse? It's like my MFA reunion plus Rhiannon. It is kind of fun to uh, like remain social media connected to the people that have been actors. And, Cause like a lot of times in the movies we've made, Jesus, John. <laughs> wee, 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 ha, ha, ha. Les poissons, les poissons. <laughs> a lot of times those actors who were in the movies, like while we knew them very collegially from the films, we yeah. weren't necessarily friends with them. They no. were just actors we cast. And, yeah. So it's fun to see like, what do they, what, 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 what do they go on, to, on? Yeah. to do? Anybody in any of our films that we've ever been involved in go on to do anything but really big. Any film that you've been involved in, in college or any well, John, Ra John Ryan is a personality on IGN, okay. uh, apropos. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, Matt McGorry was not in any of our stuff, but I was in stuff with him and he is easily the most successful because he was like on Orange is the New Black and stuff. Yep. There's this one guy, he played like the hot boyfriend in Sexually Frank. I think he's a realtor now, but he had this reel. I wonder if I can find it. Like other on-screen appearances he made besides our film. And one of them was like, teaching people how to like kayak in like Hawaii. Like he was like a tour guide, but he was really just an actor. He was really yeah. just a, <laughs> he was actually convincing. He's like, hey guys, you, you get, uh, we're gonna have an unforgettable day today. All right, all right. <laughs> all right, so you guys are ready for a little adventure this morning? 
All right, all right. If he says all right, all right, which yeah. I was like, is that the Matthew McConaughey thing you're doing? <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Now I gotta think. Hannah obviously was just acting the one time. I think she would rather have not in the first place. <laughs> like Keith? Yeah, like Keith, yeah. What's Keith doing? And Nina. <laughs> They've appeared on Box Mac. Keith went on to be a personality <laughs> on Junt's Nest. What else, what else, what else? Ben Fisher, I think he's like a comedian now in New York. Yeah. Yo, you know what's really weird? Child actors we worked with who are now in their 20s. Holy crap, that's upsetting to me. Like there was the girl in Abo who gets hit by like the eraser. Yep. She, she goes, ah, Faith has blinded me. Oh, Faith has blinded me. Great gag, by the way. She, uh, yeah, Nina wrote it on the day. She's like, you know, a fetching young lady now. <laughs> Somebody's gonna bring that out. Like at her wedding day, they'll put that clip up and they'll put everybody <laughs> laugh. Lisa Dempsey, she was in Vibes and yep. she was in Having Fun Up There. She's working, yep. she's in stuff. She knows about this show. Yeah. She's aware. She's. <laughs> She doesn't connect herself with it in any way. Well, I gotta wonder, like, how many people that I've worked with in my past creative life are like, yeah, and Frankie's doing that macaroni and cheese thing. <laughs> Still. We we're supporting him, but yeah. we're, we're staying away. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a mental health thing. Yeah. <laughs> Which it is. I guess, yeah, there's also Jake. He was the lead in uh, Abo, and he went on to be, like, a Hollywood screenwriter. I mean, Lloyd Kaufman, he's no slouch. No, 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 certainly not. He's old now, isn't he? Yeah, he's gotta be. A thousand. 2020. Do you ever have media from your childhood that almost feels like a fever dream? Yes. We've talked about this before with like yeah. the, the Punky Brewster thing, like that weird episode. Oh, just about every piece of media that I had as a child I found. Right. Right. Just because the internet is incredible. And kind of in the, in the early 2000s, it was like the realization that that might be possible. Yes. Now it's like, it's a given. There is one clip I remember watching and I'm sure it was a TV movie or TV series. It was live action of a nursery burning and on fire and a bunch of toys like burning up. Whoa. And I was very young, so this was somewhat traumatic to me. And I still have like a pretty serious fear of like houses burning down and stuff. I'm very concerned about fire. You live in the wrong house for that. What do you think about this house that's like? Well, I don't know, I mean, first of all, you're out with all these trees and you're kind of like way out here. True. Some of the water damage, some of the rooms of disaster, electronics that run upstairs. The whole computer lab is completely, no computer power supply is powered really? in there. Everything is switched off. And I only switch things on when I go in. Huh. I'm always concerned that, you know, even if it's idle and the switch is off, it could be doing something. I've asked on Reddit and other sources several times, like, does anyone recognize this clip? And I kind of explain all of the detail I can remember. Never found it. Whoa. You think it's from a movie? I'm not sure, maybe it was a bad dream. I can't, I can't say. That's crazy. Yeah. That like maybe the thing that you remember doesn't exist at all. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There was this one Care Bear album I listened to when I was a kid. And I was used to sing the songs. I used to sing them in tune, you know, because of course I can know what tune is. I went back and listened to them. They are not in any kind of tune. They're just a disaster of singing. They're awful. You adapted it. Yeah, I, I made it into a song. Yeah. My, my mental performance was way better than it actually was. And this day is my Your example is a great one, which is even though we have an index of just about everything that exists in media history, yeah. if you can't remember where the thing was, you can't necessarily index it. You can't even be sure that it exists at all. Yep. Mine is more like I've found clips of it since then. Yep. But I've never it's never been culturally relevant. I don't no one besides me has ever talked about it, as far as I can tell. And what is it? I had a, a home video learning series yeah. called Teach and Teddy. And it was an animatronic teddy bear, a la like Chuck E. Cheese. He was in like a tree house. He had like a talking bird. That's all fine. He teaches you numbers, he teaches you letters, he teaches you vowels. Sure. I'm sure you're not shocked to hear something like this exists for children. Not at all. But what made it unique was that they sold not just the tape, but this little battery powered console with it. It had like a yellow square, a red square, a blue square, and a green square. They would give you quizzes during it and you were supposed to press the button that corresponded with the correct answer. Of course, it wasn't connected in any way to this VHS tape. Sure. Though I thought it was. So it was like a video game kind of. Yeah. At least I regarded it that way. I always remember the theme song. It was like, it's time to get ready with Teach and Teddy. We're gonna have some fun. Let's get ready, I'm Teach and Teddy and we're gonna have some fun. to learn a ton. We'll learn some names, play some games, travel here and there. Let her visit and you'll be best friends with the Teach and Teddy Bear. Teach and Teddy, never heard of it. I've never heard of that. I, I don't think anybody has. <laughs> there was a lot of toys during that time where they do a run in a city. Like mm. bring out 500 in a city, see how it sold. 
If it didn't sell well, they'd never make more. This struck me a little bit as like, they shipped it to BJ's Wholesale Club. Yeah, it was a one time. And we picked it up for some reason. Yeah. Can we think of other examples of like, they'll sell you the VHS tape and something with it? I mean, that was definitely a trend for board games. There was a Murder, She Wrote board game. Right. You got the VHS tape and you'd pause it and then play the game a little and then play more of the tape and it was non-interactive. Wasn't there like a Dungeons and Dragons one kind of like yeah, that Yeah, there too? was. There yeah. were several in that kind of vein. Yeah. It is kind of a neat idea. Like when you lack the technology, you still kind of make the concept happen? Yeah. I mean, I would say like the Odyssey home console is similar to that, where it's not really a video game here. Well, there's actually some that are even earlier than that that require even more kind of imagination. Like the Fairchild, which was the real first video game system. The Fairchild? I've never even heard of that. It just put like <laughs> balls on the screen and popped them around. No score, no player. It was barely a computer, but the games were most like you got them on cards. Gloria's learning comedy. Yeah. And I think she's gonna be good at it. She's pretty funny. I can control it. I can control, control a pig. I can control a pig. She control get, it. That's why we should get control a pet pig. Control it. For her, the height of comedy right now is when you're supposed to say one thing and you just say something different instead. Uh-huh. Well, that is a key element it of is. comedy, is yeah. it not? Subverting your expectations. Yeah. We were reading like Elmo, asks how to get to Sesame Street, it's a book. Sure. And she's like, Elmo asks how to get to Pesame Pete. I read the book and I'm like, whenever I say Sesame Street, she's like, no, Pesame Pete. Say that or say something totally wrong or totally different. Start with the uh, gluten-free. Not good. No, it's bad. Cheese flavor is not the worst. It's not the best either. The pasta is just not good. It's lousy, it's bad flavored. I mean, I've had worse gluten-free pasta. Absolutely. But, but don't I've had it. better as well. Yeah. I've had better. On to the whole grain. And not bad. It's basically fine. I think the, there's a little bit too much bite to the pasta. I don't find the bite to be a problem. I, there's definitely a little undertone of a strange kind of whole wheaty taste there. That's the thing about these off pastas is they come with their own flavors. The whole wheat is very edible. I gotta say, I'm, I'm disappointed in both. I, I expected more from Kraft. I expected the cheese to kind of really override the, the poor pasta flavor. And these are reduced butter macs, all of them. What do you wanna do, Betty Baker? Yes, let's do Betty Baker. This mac doesn't look very it good. It looks like It was in date and the cheese was super stuck together. Oh yeah, you know what it tastes like? Mediocre mac that has been reheated several days later. Oh yeah, this is really bad. Barely any cheese flavor to it. And people just kept sending this, this thing. Please try this. All right, Baby Shark, which looks pretty good. It's good. I should let the pasta cook a little more. It's cooked, yeah, it wasn't. Trying to keep everything on sink here. Good cheese, though. The Baby Shark is the best out of them by far. Well, it's the only one with a proper cheese flavor. Yeah, the rest of them are total disappointments, except the whole wheat. I but mean, it, it, it's good to remind ourselves that, like, the cauliflower mac? Yeah, was good. That was really good. Yeah. But the, you gotta remember that on that mac, it was just cauliflower added into the pasta. It wasn't really a cauliflower full pasta. Well, there you have it. Um, we tried them. I think this is a white whale. It totally is. It's, it, it's an attempt to make you feel better about eating a food that's ultimately bad for you. Just, no, I'm sorry. Macaroni and cheese is gonna have to be a very sometimes food yes. if you wanna be healthy. If you wanna be healthy. Yeah, all right, cool. Bye. Bye. <laughs> all right, so you guys are ready for a little adventure this morning? All right, all right. The landscape uh, and the natural beauty of South Enders Island is phenomenal. Once you get off the, the resort grounds, you will see basically what we call the crack, where you can explore a fisher zone with fish coming in and out. 